How's everybody doing tonight? It's going to be a big one, Hilda. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live, if you haven't figured that out. You know, for me, the fall really starts when I see those pile of bright orange pumpkins, you know? You know what I'm talking about? It's just all of a sudden they show up, walk by the stores, or roadside stands, there they are, pumpkins everywhere, you know? Mostly the bigger ones, they end up as kind of the jack-o'-lantern types, but the small ones generally end up as pumpkin pie. So we asked a lot of you guys out there, what possibly would you do with pumpkins? And we got an amazing response on that WW thing of all kinds of pumpkins. So we said, so, <laughs> what are we going to do with our pumpkins besides just carving them up? Well, we got a little special guest tonight. You're going to see him carve up a storm over there. Oh, you, McMahon is with us, the uh, great pumpkin carver. Where do you see him? Oh, yeah, babe. And then, I thought I'd show you what I'm going to do, a little different things with pumpkin, cooking up pumpkin. First, what we're going to do is we're going to do a pumpkin bread. And we're going to do a pumpkin bread sandwich with pumpkin seed cream cheese icing kind of thing. Oh, wait till you see this thing. Put that in your trick-or-treat bag, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah! And then I'm going to show you... I'm going to show you how to roast it and seed it, and then I'm going to show you how this awesome pumpkin tempura. Have you ever had pumpkin tempura before? No. Oh, to die for, let me tell you. <laughs> We're going to drizzle it with caramel, cinnamon ice cream. Oh, man. And then I guess one of my favorite deals with pumpkin is a pumpkin cheesecake that we're gonna do with bourbon spiked cream. Yeah. Love that. Get ready, everybody. We're kicking up the pumpkin patch right here on Emerald Live. Pumpkin Land, welcome. Yo, how you doing, my friend? All right. Good to have you. Thank so, you. So, uh, we're going to keep checking on as the show sort of evolves. We're going to keep checking with you over here and see what he's up to. And uh, I promise you, he's going to pull some magic out of those pumpkins. We'll come back and talk with him a little bit. Little history on pumpkins. What you really want to look for, you definitely want to look for when you're buying a pumpkin. People think that they have to be the perfect, perfect roundness. I disagree with that. We'll ask you later on what he thinks, but what you really want to look for is the good weight, okay? A good weight. Also, an inch or two. You would like to try to find it with an inch or two of stem. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to buy them kind of in the small, medium, and large range. Now, large, we just found out recently, we've got a picture of it, World's record pumpkin right now, over 800 pounds. No, Can you? It's, it's, no, it's more than that. It's, it oh, is? It's 1,140, and I may be carving it. 1,140 pounds, and yeah. you may be carving it. Yep. We're going to have to go get a new picture of that one. I can tell you that. <laughs> then you want to look for small, medium, and large. Like, these are really the perfect pumpkin for cooking in between this range because it's got a lot more sugar. Then as they get bigger, that's the ones that you want to have fun with and carve up. And of course, a lot of these types of pumpkins, decoration. They're kind of sweet. They're really firm. You could hurt somebody with this, actually. <laughs> but anyhow, these are more decorative. Or well, lots of restaurants and people at home now, what they'll do is they'll do different, either a pumpkin souffle or stuffings, and they'll use these as a little shell to bake them in like that, which is a kind of a cool idea. I... um. I want to show you when we come back here a second, uh, basically how we're going to start with pumpkin. But I got to give Doc a little trick or treat present first. I told him I was going to uh, get him something, and I uh, wanted to let oh, make sure man. that I am a man of my word. It's his new drum key. Somebody stole his drum key, so I uh, made some arrangements to get a couple new drum man. keys. Great. <laughs> one for you, one for me. No problem. We can get them tuned up. 
There you go. When we come back, I promise you we're going to kick it up a notch. Stick around. We'll be right back. Checking in with you, McMahon here, our kicked up carver here. What, what you working on, Hugh? Well, I'm carving the image of the sun in the pumpkin. Hopefully it's gonna turn out okay. Look, it's looking good right now. Mm, thanks. That's some cool eyebrows you got on that thing. That's right, well, they're flaming eyebrows. Flaming eyebrows. <laughs> I won't go there, it's uh... <laughs> Try to see if you can get a G in the back of that, all right? All right. All right, we're gonna keep checking in with him in a little bit. You know, I have a lot of great childhood memories this very simple thing that uh, with pumpkin seeds. I love pumpkin seeds and I remember when uh, the pumpkins would come out and I would go get a bunch of them and Hilda would make this batch of these pumpkin seeds. She would, I would carve the pumpkins and we'd take the seeds out and there's a way that you gotta clean them real good, which I'm gonna show you all in a minute. And then she would take some salt and pepper and that pimentum weather stuff that we talked about and kind of just sort of toss that and lightly roast them Boy, oh boy, I tell you, what a snack. And um, at the same time, what I'm gonna do is show you a simple way to roast them to extract as much flavor uh, out of the pumpkin as you can. So I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm using a sharp knife. Unlike you, he's got these um, special tools that he's using. I bet you those things are really sharp. What you yeah, got there? Yeah, this is an X-Acto knife uh, where I do the detailing. And this is a fruit and vegetable knife. You can get this at any kind of uh, gro uh, grocery store or, or hardware store. Pretty sharp, huh? Uh, it's sharp and it's good for taking corners if you want the thin blade. If you need some more artillery, let me know. I got a couple, right. of, a couple of carving knives here myself. When I carved that pig pumpkin, I'll come I back. I got this one time. right over here. Now, this is pretty good. <laughs> All right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the top off of my pumpkin here first, like such. We uh, can keep that if you want. Carve it, and basically you can see how this is pretty firm. And once we poke this, the seeds are in here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use a knife like this, just kind of go around, just so that we can get a starting point, like such. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> now, what I want to show you first of all is the seeds that you take out of this pumpkin like we're making pumpkin seeds right now. And they're good as a snack, they're good as a garnish for a lot of things. One of my favorite things to do is take a whole pumpkin like this, a sweet pumpkin, and um, you can cook the pumpkin, cutting it like this, inside of a chicken stock or some sort of broth that you can spice up a little bit. And you slowly simmer that until the pumpkin gets cooked. And then you take it out and take the insides of the pumpkin add it inside of the soup and kind of mash it, puree it, you know, with the boat motor kind of thing, season it up and then strain it, and then you got your seeds. The thing about the seeds is that you want to keep them, and you're going to have to wash them, because the further we get down here, which I'm going to show you, they kind of get attached to some of that sweet pumpkin, you see? So you want to be sure to, I'm using just a bowl of water here, and you let them soak like this, and then get the seeds out real nice. Now, the other thing that you want to do beside that, these kind of pieces, once you get the seeds out, you can kind of save this to roast, okay? Instead of wasting this, because this is all the flesh right here. Then what you do, when you get the seeds all cleaned out, then what you can do is take your knife and cut the pumpkin in pieces, I'm going to show you just a quick one real quick with the seeds here. So we got all of that moved out with the seeds. You with me so far, guys? Yeah. Okay, then this right here, this is what you want to roast. This is what we're going to do some great fun stuff with. You can cut this in strips. 
So we got the seeds working. Then what you do with this, depending on how big you want it, you rub this with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper. Then you put flesh side down. I'll show you, we'll just oil this pan right here. If you have a non-stick one, that will work too. And then what we'll do, guys, is this. A little salt and pepper. <laughs> All right, so now we got salt. Get some pepper. Then you lay this flesh side down and you slow roast it for about 350 degrees. And all the sweetness starts coming out of the pumpkin. So you can do all kinds of things with them. The seeds, as I said, which I did some here, after you have them cleaned and washed like that, this is what they should look like. Then your favorite spice, like I said, Hilda's is salt, pepper, a little olive oil on side of the sheet pan, and then you bake them like this until a nice golden brown. You want to talk about a great snack. When we come back, another notch. Stick around. Yeah. Back in. And quick. Hey, welcome back, folks. Check it out, huh? We got the master carver in the house. Hugh McMahon is in the house. That looks pretty good, huh? That's pretty awesome. <clears throat> I don't know if you had a chance to notice how many pumpkins we got here in the studio, but I want to thank our good buddies over at uh, Manhattan Fruit Exchange for sending over a few pumpkins. Last night about midnight, they sent over a whole trailer truck full of pumpkins, so... Uh, they look pretty good. I want to thank our buddies over there. All right. I'm sorry, I ate half the seeds during the commercial break. Some Hilda memories coming back. I'm going to show you how to make this very simple, really delicious pumpkin bread. And you don't have to just wait around, you know, the Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas season. Pumpkins, generally, when you pick them, if you can store them in a temperature between 40 and 60 degrees, cool, you know, like in a basement, or you can uh, really keep them for a couple of months. They'll be okay. But then after that, you're going to have to rely on either frozen pumpkin flesh uh, that I prefer to cook before I freeze it, or there's a lot of great quality canned pumpkin out there as well for the rest of the year. So I've got a little vegetable shortening, and I'm using my paddle that I'm going to just kind of let that sort of get nice and soft. And then I've got some brown sugar and I've got some eggs. The eggs obviously will be for creaming that once I add the sugar into the shortening. Or if I had butter, it would be the same thing. Then on a little baking paper, I want to sift some dry ingredients. I've got some regular all-purpose flour. I've got some baking powder, which is going to kind of make it poofy a little bit. A little baking soda. Baking soda is generally used for retarding it a little bit more. And that's so that you can eat it the next day as well. It's generally when baking soda is used in there. I'm gonna add some cinnamon in here. Love that cinnamon stuff. Then I have a little ginger. Unlike Mary Ann, this is just ginger. <laughs> now, you see why you sift things? You see those little kind of it's just because of the temperature. So what you can do is you just flatten them out like that, either with a spoon or with your hand, and then you don't have those lumps. Then I have a little bit of salt as well that I'm going to put in there. Very simple. One ingredient left. And uh, got some nutmeg. Try to use fresh nutmeg if you can. You'll get the maximum flavor. You know, they come with this little gadget like this. You know, it's, it's like its own little house. And then you can take it out of the house like that, you know. 
And then you just kind of, it's a big, big difference when you use fresh grated nutmeg like this. And you don't need a lot of it. Then you can put it back in the house and forget about it. All right, now that this is soft, I'm gonna add the brown sugar in here now. Then we're gonna bring that together. You wanna preheat your oven about 350 degrees, okay? 350, 360, you wanna preheat your oven. You should do it in the middle of the oven on the rack, of course. Then, once the sugar mixes in with the shortening, I'm gonna add the eggs, one egg at a time. Pretty simple, huh? Wow, rocket science. <laughs> then I've got a one pound pan that I just lightly buttered, or you could use shortening, I like to use butter. Not too heavy. Now we're ready to put the cake batter together. We've got that working. Now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn the machine off, cause I like these guys over here. And then use my baking paper like this. Kind of just bring this over to the mixing bowl. Nice and neat. And we'll add that in there. Keep this, of course. Then, I've got buttermilk. I've got a couple of cups of pumpkin meat. Okay, so now what we're gonna do We'll mix those ingredients in. Start working them in there. Turn the machine off. Now what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna add our pumpkin meat. You could use sweet potatoes too if you couldn't find pumpkin. Sweet potatoes would be good with this too. Then, gonna add the machine on. Mix the pumpkin flesh in there. Slowly add our buttermilk. You should smell how this smells already. Now, before we finish this, very important. You want to take your spatula like this and scrape down the sides to make sure that everything is incorporated, okay? Which means that everything's mixed up at one shot. Great thing to do with the family. Now we'll finish it, very simple. Make sure the batter's all nice and smooth. Oven's on 350. Right at the end, we'll take a little bit of pecans. Add some pecans in there. Oh yeah, babe. Now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to do business here. Now, we'll take our filling like this, put it inside of our greased or buttered loaf pan. This is gonna bake for about 55 minutes to an hour, okay? Don't be sticking any like toothpicks in it. Yeah, what did it do to you? Okay? Now, put it right inside, middle of the oven, 350, 55 minutes to an hour. I don't know what, uh, what you, McMahon over here, has got up his sleeve, but um, we're gonna check on this one right here. We'll see what, what's he got here. How's that one look? Huh? That looks pretty close. When we come back, oh, we got some pumpkin surprises for you. Stick around.
Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. We're going to keep, that's a keeper. Now have the official pumpkin face. Yeah. 55 minutes. What was, I got to tell everybody that instrument that Doc was playing, it's, it's called a guica. It's from Brazil, right? From Brazil, right. And uh, he kind of works it in the inside of the drum by stretching uh, the skin of the drum. It's really cool. See that? Could bring that out for, bring that out for Halloween. For Halloween, right. <laughs> Speaking about Halloween, this time of the year, this is a really, really good thing for the kids, too. I mean, I eat six or seven of them myself. But this is really, really a cool thing. Let me show you. You let it cool when it comes out of the oven about 55 minutes an hour. And take a knife and just go along the side, gingerly, okay? Then what you want to do after it cools, you want to be able to take it out of this loaf pan like such. And then as I said, as it cools, use a serrated knife. What I like to do is kind of just cut with the serrated knife a little bit of the end piece off, okay? Because the end piece during the baking like that, it gets a little, which I love. You can see all the pecans in there as well. But you want to talk about kicking it up for the kids? Watch this. Generally what I do is I take about a piece about, oh, an inch or so. You see that? And you can keep it whole if you want, or you can cut it in half. You see that? Then what I do is I take cream cheese and I sweeten it to the sweetness that you like, maybe a little bit of vanilla. Then, if you have these seeds, you can do that, that's fine. If you go to a store and buy pumpkin seeds, don't get a lime that they look like this, you see? Because basically what the difference is, these still have the outer shells. These have been shelled, okay? So either one, it doesn't matter. I'd like to take these pumpkin seeds, mix them in, the sweetened cream cheese, a little vanilla, and confectionery sugar. Then you take this, right? Add a little bit like that. And you make a little sandwich. You see? Kind of like this. Now that's a little munch, you know, with the filling, but hey, I'm a little munch at times too, so. <laughs> then what you can do is you can just wrap them like this. Oh, I love that. I don't want my hand. <laughs> don't want them sopranos saying anything. <laughs> then you wrap them up like this for the kids. Or you can wrap them up for mom and dad, let them cool. You want to talk about a great snack. If you put them back in the ice box, right, they even firm up a little bit more. You know, the frosting in there. So. Hey, great for the lunchbox, Halloween parties, Thanksgiving parties. Come here, honey. There's a little snack for you right there, okay? There you go. All right. There you have it. The other thing, the other thing I tell people is that you can just slice it out, put the bowl out, let them dip it in there. The kids have a ball during a party, birthday party. Huh? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> All right. Moving on. <laughs> You're going to love this. Oh, Wait. I'm ready. <laughs> I took one of those small or medium-sized pumpkins and wedged it. Took the seeds out. And basically, like, any, like you're going to do with broccoli, you blanch it in water so that it's fork tender. Okay? Not rocket science. Just nice piece of pumpkin. Let it cool, fork tender, nice piece of pumpkin. You can let your imagination go wild right now. Simple vegetable, full of vitamins, 
fun. You can just dice it up with butter and have buttered pumpkin as a vegetable. You can add brown sugar, have caramelized pumpkin. Great with pork chops. It's a pork fat thing, what can I say? <laughs> you just let it go on. You can put it in a pot with butter, little cream, mash it, mash pumpkin. You can mix it with potato. Just let your mind go crazy. Or, I was saying earlier, you got a lot of pumpkins like this, do this, and then you can use that zip bag thing, and then you can put it in the freezer. Then come January or whatever, when you get the urge for pumpkin, you got some pumpkin. Now, if you want to kick it up a notch, watch this. In this bowl right here, I'm going to add flour. I'm going to add cornstarch. Look at how much cornstarch I'm going to order using here. Almost equal pots. Reason why I'm making this tempura batter. Then, got a little sugar. Nice pinch of salt. Bam! I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I get the urge every now and then of just... What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix those ingredients together with an egg. And then as the liquid, we use ice cold salsa water. You could use club soda too. Hey, use ginger ale, I don't care. You can always add, it's got to be ice, ice cold is the key. That's why I got a little, my own little version wine bucket there, you know, for the salsa. What's gonna happen? See what it's doing in the bowl right here? See how it's fizzing up like that? This makes a phenomenal tempura batter, not only just with pumpkin, but any kind of vegetable, zucchini, eggplant. Now, it's obviously too thick, but that's the point of what I was making to you. You can always add, but you can't take away. So we're gonna add a little bit more. It should be almost like a nice pancake batter. Doc, you see how easy that is? Man, I could do that at home. <laughs> and you want to get this, like, really, really nice. See this consistency here? And you're using this whisk to get out any of those flour or cornstarch lumps like this. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. All right. When you're ready, vegetable oil, 350 degrees. If you're doing this on the stove top, in like a six or eight quart pot, and you're frying on the stove, make sure that you don't have the vegetable oil more than half full when you're frying, unless you want to decorate your house. <laughs> because when you add things on the pot like that, the oil expands, okay? The more you add in there, it keeps expanding. You don't want hot oil, trust me, like that. When you're ready, you dip this inside of the tempura batter like this. You see that? Oh, I love that feeling. <laughs> Real nice, gently, and then you go right inside the fryer. Be very careful when you're working with hot oil, folks. Okay? I'm gonna fry these up. This would be a good time for you to go get one of those whatever, frozen things, and when we come back, another notch! Stick around! <laughs> Doc Gibbs and Cliff. We've got the uh, tempura pumpkin almost done, getting ready to come out. We're going to check in with our master carver here, Hugh McMahon. Hugh, how'd you make it out over there, buddy? Well, we got a sunny pumpkin here. 
Wow. Can we get a better shot of that? Can we bring the lights down a little? Can we bring the lights down a little more? Check it out, huh? Awesome. Great job. Thank you. Excellent job, you. I like the one that you did, too, of the uh, EL guy over there, too. That's pretty good. You can good. recognize him, huh? Actually, uh, <laughs> folks, if uh, some of you are lucky enough, not only uh, living in the uh, five boroughs in uh, New Jersey, Connecticut, et cetera, but uh, those of you that may be planning a trip to New York, you, McMahon, will be at our Friends of the Manhattan Fruit Exchange during the next month or so. Check the website. He'll be there doing some carving demonstrations for people and the kids and carving pumpkins, et cetera. You should check them out if you get a chance. Fascinating, fascinating. All right. So, Doc, I got the tempura pumpkin right now. I want to show you what I'm going to do. Okay. You know, I always say when you're frying something, you know, them French fries come out, or, you know, you've got those skins of potatoes or whatever you're frying, I always tell you that you got to season it as soon as it comes out of the oil. Well, just because this is going to be sweet, not savory, you still got to kind of season it. What I use is I use a little cinnamon and sugar mixture, wow. just like that, okay? You see that, Doc? Ooh. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to show you how we're going to kick this up right through the roof. Check this out. I made some cinnamon ice cream. Basically, a nice vanilla bean base, five ingredients, with cinnamon in them. And that manufacturers, you know, whatever they suggest that you do, because each machine's different. I have caramel. You can buy caramel. You could simply make caramel. It's very simple. Water and sugar, get that nice caramel, slowly cooked. Right at the end, I like to add just a little bit of cream to it to make it a little bit, of, you know, a little creamier, the caramel. And then I've got the tempura pumpkin. So what I like to do to show you this, folks, is I like to take about one or two pieces of the tempura pumpkin like that that has that cinnamon sugar on it. Then... Take a nice scoop of that cinnamon ice cream, sort of in the center there. All right, we'll add a little more cinnamon ice cream. A little more cinnamon ice cream, okay? Then I sprinkle a little bit of this cinnamon sugar like this, decoration. Little powdered sugar just like this, okay? And then we'll add a nice little decorative mint like this. And then just to kick it up one more notch, Doc Gibbs, <laughs> I take that caramel like this and just kind of just drizzle it like this with the pumpkin. Oh, man. There you have it, some tempura pumpkin. <laughs> you want to talk about good? You guys got to make some friends now. Thank you. Don't make any friends. Oh, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> A little ice cream like that. Huh. Huh. Unbelievable. Now that our good friend you is done working, we'll give him a little snack. All right, Doc, I'm not going to forget you. Oh, there you go. That looks great. Thank you. There you go. You walk. And your, your, uh, the pumpkin bread, too, is fantastic. I've been eating Isn't it great? So, it works well with my carving knife, too. I tell okay, you, we're, you we were talking about that at the break, <laughs> you and I, about that pumpkin bread, especially warm. It's phenomenal. Just, just eating it warm oh, like that. And then you good. put that icing on it. Oh, my God. It's the best I've had. Oh, thank you. I got ground vanilla wafers. You can use whatever cookies you want. And I got pecans, ground. You could use whatever nut you want. Little bit of butter, OK? That makes a really, really good crust. What you do is you make sure that you mix it up. And those vanilla wafers, the pecans and that butter, nice and moist. Mix it all in like this. Then in a springform pan, 
That's what this is. Reason why I got it covered up like this is because sometimes as you start using them, like I've used mine, sometimes they get little cracks in them. You know, and they ooze out. Hey, I'm not going to throw it away. Just cover it up like that. Put a cap on it. <laughs> then we're going to put this in here. And we're going to form the crust. Makes a perfect crust right here. Not only do you want to form that. Let me get this on here for a second. You want to make a little lip. How do you do that? As soon as you get it pressed evenly, what you do is you form, using your fingertips like this, you just press. See how it's kind of coming up the sides like that? You make a little lip like this. Now, you can either bake your crust 350 degrees for about 12 minutes, or sometimes I don't even bake them. Sometimes I just put it in raw like this, particularly with a cheesecake. Let me show you what we're going to do now. I've got some cream cheese right here. You got to soften it first. Not only when you're working with, this is a cheesecake, by the way, if you're just like flown in from another planet. <laughs> Not only do you leave it out to get room temperature, but you got to work it and get it smooth for us. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pumpkin meat, vanilla, cinnamon, okay? Little flour, brown sugar. You with me so far? That was five ingredients. Crust, five ingredients. Cream cheese makes six. Little bit of buttermilk and about six eggs. You add the eggs last, slowly. Add the eggs, scraping down the sides to make the filling. We're going to take the filling, pour it in the crust. Then I want to show you another important thing while I'm making the filling. See, I've got this roasting pan in here, right? I got this roasting pan in here full with about a quarter of an inch of water because you need to take the spring form pan, which is why I also got some foil on it, and put it inside of the water. Then just put a little piece of foil over it. The reason for that is that will prevent it more likely from not cracking, your cheesecake from cracking. Okay. Oven's on. I'm going to make the filling when we come back. Another knot. Stick around. Back in. Are learning something a little new uh, and easy with pumpkins. They said, look, it'll never fit in that thing. It'll never fit in there. Looks like it all fit there to me. <laughs> you want to make sure it's very smooth. You see the bubbles that are happening right there? Let them just kind of do that for a little bit, okay? You don't need to put any more air inside of your filling like that. Scrape down the side of your bowl, pour your filling inside of the pan, right? Then, like I said, 350 degrees, we're putting it inside of a water bath. It will help it a little bit from cracking, okay? About an hour and 15 minutes is what it's going to take. Cool it down. Very important that you let it cool. Very important holiday times coming up. Do this a day or two before. Cheesecakes get even better the day and two days after. When you're ready to unmold it, go around your spring form pan, and then that's when you pop it like this, okay? Here's how I like to finish it. I want to show you a trick. Use a little wedge. Now, folks, if you don't wipe your knife, you're going to have like messy cheesecake. You could either dip it in water and then kind of do this, or you can just do it dry. Here's how I like to serve mine. I like a little wedge of mine like such. Look at how beautiful that is. No cracks. Look at that, right? Check this out. 
I did some fresh whipped cream. Then what I did is once I got the fresh whipped cream, I added a little bourbon in there. Now I got some bourbon cream, right? Take a little bit of bourbon cream like this. I like a little drizzle of chocolate in mine. I don't know about yours. Bam, 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 bam. Kind of a little bams like that. There you have it, pumpkin cheesecake, all right? Pumpkin cheesecake, unbelievable. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight here on The Pumpkin Show. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody.